Hey everyone, welcome to Pop XP. And before the show starts, make sure to click that subscribe button and click the bell to get notifications when we go live and we upload awesome new content. And don't forget, if you can, make sure to share our stream on all your social media outlets. We appreciate it, and thanks for helping us grow the Pop XP channel. Hey, what is going on, YouTube? The dream team of stream is back in the house. You've got the brain of the mainframe now, Scal here with the Pop XP, and joining me, my partner in crime. That's right, the king of stream. Mr. Brian Blevins, how you doing, That's brother? That's, That's you. Me. That's Thanks. you. That's you, I'm doing man. Well. I'm doing well. How are you now, dude? I'm doing great. It's been a it's been a great week. You know, we're approaching the end, so you know what that means. A little a uh, little a week in pops coming up that we'll be work, working on. But yeah. uh, man, I'm pretty hyped. I'm hyped because you know me, bro. I'm a DC man, guy. There's so so much stuff that has came out this past uh the past two weeks for us to talk about in the week in pop too. And so much stuff that's coming out next week. Next which week. Is just gonna be, I mean, the next two weeks are just gonna be insane for movies and TV. Oh, so uh, we you know, I'm, I'm pretty I'm pretty excited about that. But um man, we're gonna have to have like a mind blown episode next week of everything that's yeah. gonna be premiering and coming out. <laughs> yeah, it's be unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, I'm uh I'm still a little uh a little bit concerned about what's gonna happen with Superman and Lois. Like they came out the gate so strong, I just with them taking a hiatus, I don't know if uh, I don't know if they're going to continue that uh, that energy when they I don't know if that that energy don't and that hype train it. is still going to be there when they come back. You know, don't you say it, it will be there. Well, you see how we, strong he is. He picked. He made an iceberg. We he picked see, it up he, out of the he water. Made, he made an iceberg and picked it up. And yeah. he picked it up. He's like, I made yeah. that. Yeah, he's I'm like, pick it up and I'm going to drop it. And he he's did. like, what? What nothing? What nothing? Nah, we'll see what happens with that. We'll see what yeah, happens yeah, with that. Yeah, yeah, but man, yeah. we got a great show tonight and a great show oh for God, all you dude. viewers out there. But remember, before we get started with our amazing interview, make sure to head down and look a little bit below. You might see a little button. That's the subscribe button. Give that a click and also tap that bell. Get notifications when we go live and we upload new content. And speaking of content, is buttons. it is it a is it a button or is it a button? Bro, it's a button. <laughs> it's a button. Button Not a button or a button. You're sick. You're a sick man, Blevins. But uh, uh, but without further ado, please, my friend, let's look, please oh God, do the honors and introduce so, our guest. So today. excited. So excited. I'm so excited. Nope. And I just can't. Nope. Where's the chicka tick apart? Did you hear uh, that? No. All right. No, I'm out on that. All right, brother. Bring him in, brother. Well, you know. Being a huge animated fan, like I collected all the animated comic books. I watched all the shows. Man, DC killed it in the animated space uh, leading up to, you know, before the Marvel Cinematic Universe came into play. But, uh, but man, one of the guys who you can see in almost all of these books, you know, putting his stamp, like, I mean, etching his, etching his space in the animated space was none other than our guest tonight, the most amazing Christopher Jones. Boom. Well, hello. There you go. Nice. How's it going, sir? It's going well. And, you know, I, I was as happy with the premiere of Superman and Lois as anybody. But, like, if you're going to talk about the iceberg thing, we need to acknowledge that he'd already done that stunt in Superman 3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a bit yeah, of an he homage. Actually, he actually froze the whole, <laughs> he froze the whole lake, though. That's true. He froze I, the whole lake. Yeah. Now, I, I'm looking forward to the upcoming episode where, you know, a guest star uh, takes cross-country skis off the top of a skyscraper. And, <laughs> you know, I think maybe that's just, that's where you leave the Superman 2 yeah, homages yeah. is the freezing the water for the, yeah, that's good enough. Man, so, I tell you what, I I thought I thought Lois and Superman was awesome. Like I, I thought it was it. great. I went I into it with horrible expectations because mm -hmm. I hated that character on Supergirl and I hated Lois Lane on Supergirl. I I don't know why. I just really didn't like them. But man, I don't know. Just right out the I, gate, it was like boom. And I was like, dude, this guy's I, this is Superman. I like this guy as Superman from the get go. I the only thing that bugged me is I hated the clasp things that yeah. they put on the cape. Yeah. So when they revised the costume for for him getting his own show, I was delighted. But Maybe that's what it was. As good as the main costume looks, I'm like I, they could have just left him in the Fleischer suit. And yes. Happy. Yeah. That oh, is. Oh my yes. gosh! That looks oh my so god! Good. 
Dude, we did it, say it, that it, only because it was like, like bright that. primary colors. It's like, oh. Dude, it was just what? now that was a perfect homage to the Fleischer cartoons. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It was yeah. it was for the for the four seconds that it was on yeah. the screen. Like at least uh, a half uh, hour of that. Come on, before the babies are born. My mom made it for me. Oh, it. <laughs> but what were your thoughts? So I just I just have to ask because it it does bother me that like you know when he's not Superman, he's Clark Kent. You know he looks like a well proportioned man, but then when he's in that Superman suit, it's almost like. It's got air pads in it. You know, I, had in a, gonna... I had a thought about this. I don't think his head looked too in... tiny. I don't think it's what they're intending, but I kind of like the idea that the Superman costume has padded muscles built into it, not because he thinks he needs to look even bigger and more impressive than he already is, but because it helps sell the Clark Kent disguise that he's yeah. smaller than people think that's, Superman is. That's where I thought you were going to go. I don't think that. that's where yeah. they what, the, what they intend. But I, as I had thought about the costume, I'm like, I actually kind of like that as a theory. Yeah, it's like maybe maybe that's, that's a really good theory. Kid, actually, maybe that's why his kids never recognize him. They're like, mm -hmm. they're like, we've seen Superman a thousand times. Like, we know that you're not him, and he's like. And they're like, oh my god! <laughs> it's well, like, they, can, they can always pull the old super hypnotism. <laughs> Uh, idea from the was like it, in 70s comics when they briefly, briefly uh, went with the idea that his the glass from the uh, the windshield of the spaceship that that they used to make his Clark Kent glasses out of <laughs> were without his knowledge amplifying some sort of latent hypnosis power that he has, Dude. which was <laughs> making people think that Clark Kent looks scrawny. It, like makes no sense at all. It's like the moment like somebody photographs and you think they'd be like, but why does Clark look like Superman in this photo? You're like, well, I mean, 18, work, 18, but... 18 years of his kids, like surely they have had to see him without his glasses off in 18 years. You're right. right? I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess it's just the whole thing. I mean, of, he didn't sleep with his glasses. It would never occur to you that your dad was Superman. The fact that your dad looks a little like Superman doesn't make you think, I bet he's an alien <laughs> that can lift cars and fly. Right. Well, aren't um, all dads Superman to their kids? Oh. Mm. Mm. oh look at mm. <laughs> Great minds. Great minds think alike. <laughs> Dude, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> But uh, but yeah. Anyway, <laughs> man, we can talk about Superman and Lois. We're not here talking oh, about I, Superman and Lois. You know, Dude, I, 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 I'm like everybody else. I have been locked up in my apartment during the pandemic, and like miss just getting to geek out over stuff with with people. So you know, man. I'm easy. Right I gotta now. say, I'm, man, CW though has crushed it for me. Like for the most part, besides I, I did, I was never from the beginning not really a fan of Batwoman. Uh, Supergirl, I liked the Flash. Freaking, I think is. To yeah. me, is the best yeah, of the top CW. Notch, top, top notch. I love what they did with that. Arrow was awesome until, like, especially though when I realized, like, oh my god, he's just a homicidal maniac. <laughs> he's just like <laughs> killing. He's killed I, more people I, than like. <laughs> yeah, I, I could nitpick all of them, but you know they've delivered some moments that I was just tickled that like I can't believe we're getting to see this character or this this moment that I know from the comics. Yeah, in live action. How um, how excited um, were you to see Constantine on DC Legends of Tomorrow as a as a main character? Well, it was great to to see him come back just because you know the the actor is such a great fit. Yeah, for the Matt part. Ryan's the best. And yeah. and you know, given that his own show kind of got the short shrift, uh, it's nice to see that uh, that the that pairing of actor and character has has found a way to endure. So, yeah, man, he's. And he's voiced all. He's voiced Constantine in all of the shows that Constantine is. All the well, he's like he is Constantine. Like he yeah. is. The, oh, like, actually, Keanu Reeves yeah. plays him on the big screen, and I believe he's doing it again, reviving the role. Yeah, I was going to say there's been rumors going around about a new Keanu Reeves Constantine movie. I'm like, why don't they give Matt Ryan a feature film? Yeah. If, it, I, if they don't think it worked well as a TV series, it's like eh, put him in a movie. Yeah. yeah. Do you ever Do you ever Plus, wonder that though? Art. Cause like really like uh, some of these TV actors play these portray these characters so well, you know, and, and have revived some of these characters that may not really have been you know in people's radar for a while, and then you get to the big screen and they go like a whole another route, and you're like, no, I want that Flash. Well, I get why you know it, you can't you can't you know if someone's got a TV series, and then you, they're going to make a Justice League movie, 
well, you couldn't get like Grant, uh, Grant, uh, Justin, Justin, thank you. Ugh. Um, that you know, you'd have to stop making the Flash TV show for him to have time to go off and film the Justice League movie. So I get that, but in the case of someone like Matt Ryan, when you know his the t his TV series ended, you could have him, you know, not show up on Legends of Tomorrow for a year and have him go shoot a Constantine movie, no mm -hmm. problem. Um, now, how what their ambitions are for keeping a co consistent cinematic universe that is separate from its TV Berlanti verse, whatever, you know, whatever yeah. you want to call it, the Arrowverse. <laughs> well, I mean, during um, the crisis, during the crisis on Infinite Earths, I mean, at least they brought the Flash in. Yeah, no, that was nice. he was the that only was guy nice. willing to do it. Like they weren't like. There's well, no he had all that controversy. That because he had to be like, check. yeah, I'm jumping in there, you know. I mean, I'm the I'm the last guy who's going to be able to offer any kind of insight into what Warner Brothers is thinking. Oh no, yeah. Um, you know, I I I I'll get into disagreement with some people that that are much more enthusiastic about some of the recent films um, than I have been, and like, you know, I come to terms with the fact that there have been such different versions of these characters depicted not only in spin-off media but even in the comics that you know someone can say that they're a superman fan or a batman fan and it's possible that they are talking about a really different character than what i have in my head right when i say superman or batman and so depending on which version you know what what resonates with you as a fan you're going to like different versions of the characters so you know mm -hmm. i i just try to focus on enjoying the stuff i enjoy and the stuff that isn't for me, I'm like, well, I'm glad that there are people out there that seem to be liking that and let them enjoy that. And hopefully, you know, there'll be a version that I can get more excited about later. Well, mm -hmm. I know you said that you liked uh, you liked Tyler as uh, as Superman. Yeah. I don't, know, I don't know if you remember that time period before he got introduced, but the buzz around everywhere was that Tom Welling was going to come back and reprise the role of Superman and that also opened up for Michael Rosenbaum to come back and reprise his role as Lex Luthor. I and must have I missed have, those fan rumors. Oh my god, dude! It was yeah. I, was, no, I believe uh, you. I'm just like I. I'm it was so, insane. Yeah, I was not following. Dude, the, my the head would have exploded. I would have been, been great. Yeah, it would have been great. And then maybe maybe that's why I didn't like the guy so much. Maybe I was just I'm like that guy's not Tom Welling. I was just happy that he showed up, and we got we got uh, you know that that kind of likable nice guy Superman. Like yeah, he showed not the, his introduction is Clark when he's having the conversation with Perry White on the phone. And he's hemming and hawing and yes, Chief and no, no, sir, and you know the and all that. I'm like, okay, that's that's my Clark Kent. But then you see him with Supergirl, and like just the the, the banter between the two of them. I'm like, oh, sold. The, yeah. This guy is Superman for me. Does it? Yeah. Yeah, and they but, they knocked it out of the gate like on Supergirl. They knocked it out of the gate bringing in Helen Slater and uh, and um, hmm. God, what's his name from uh, Lois and Clark? Oh, Dean uh, Kane. Dean Kane. Dean Dean Kane. Kane. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they knocked it, out, but then they never brought them up again at all. And then uh, then of course, like they bring in John Cryer, who was literally Lex Luthor's son in the Christmas nephew. Movie. nephew. Nephew, nephew, sorry, oh, yeah. yeah, nephew. Uh, during the during Superman <laughs> Quest for Peace, you know, I don't know. Like it was just, I was, uh, man, I, I just, I, I'm glad you, they you did it. John Cryer did a job, huh? Yeah, yeah. I, well, I, was, I was just saying, you you do the stunt casting where you can. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was, um, yeah, I was excited. I was hoping that Tom Welling was coming in. I was like, you could do it. I think we guys. all were. We all were, but you know, he, he made so many comments and things that he wasn't going to be doing it. He wasn't being. No, he said he wanted role. to do it. Yeah, but when it came to it, he was like, I'm not going to be in the role, guys. Oh, he probably, wanted to do it. I didn't let him yeah. in the role, yeah. yeah. But I, you know, why I oughta. Which is, which is odd because then when he made his, his little cameo appearance in Crisis, he still yeah. didn't put on the suit. No. no, he's still just like standing around in plaid, you know. Like, okay, okay, I guess that's just how you want to play the character. Is you know, is... I think he he looks like Superman, dude. He does. 
I, it's it's a shame like that he's never really gotten to play a full fledged Superman. He's he's he, always played this sort of on the cusp Superman. Yeah, he's he's grown up now, and you know I, I saw I saw the interview with him. Yeah, he has. I, I saw the interview with him and Michael Rosenbaum, which you know was just an amazing interview. If you get a chance to watch it, uh, he Michael Rosenbaum has a podcast, and it was him and Tom uh-huh. Welling talking, and man, it was incredible. But dude, he looks the part now. I mean, like he's in shape, like he's ready to put that cape on and fly. Well, and I to don't be know. fair, this was a guy who looked twenty when he was supposed to be playing a yeah, yeah, absolutely, sophomore. yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's so awesome. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Uh, no, he 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 looks the part. He it would have been fun to see him do it. Didn't work out yeah. for whatever reason. We'll never, we'll never get it. We'll never get it. Now he gave it up for kids. He gave it up for the gave kids. It, gave it up for the children's. So now, Christopher, now let's get into a little bit of your origin story. You know, after you got bit by that radioactive comic, mm-hmm. you know, where did it go? Where did it go from there? Yeah. Um. Oh gosh. I, so I tell friends that I am lucky enough to have the job I wanted when I was five years old. If you'd asked me as a kid what I wanted to be when I grew up, uh, I would have said comic book artist. And now it's comic book artist and working in animation. But for a long time, it was comic book art. And, uh, gosh, I mean, I started out uh, doing um, stuff that didn't pay very well for little small publishers that nobody's ever heard of. Uh, A lot of the early comics I did were crime and horror, which actually would come as a surprise to people that mainly know me for all of the animation tie-in books that I've done. Um, I never really um, set out to, to... um, specialize in that sort of thing. It is just, you know, once you get known for doing that kind of work, that's what people think of you to offer you going forward. It's sort of like an actor getting typecast a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I love doing that stuff. I, I'd be happy to do more of it. Uh, it's just, um, it, it, it was a little frustrating at times that that's all I was getting offered just because there's so fewer of those books out there which really limits then the pool of work that's available to you to do. Um, But uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, I broke in at DC um, having uh, sent them samples that included my drawing more mainstream stuff, but also uh, I had done a, a tryout to do storyboarding for Warner Brothers Animation and nothing came of that, but I included those samples in a packet of stuff I sent to DC. And those got seen by an editor who was looking for someone to do a fill-in issue on a comic they were doing at the time that was drawn in a more cartoony style. It was a book called Young Heroes in Love, which was meant to be kind of a, the garage band of superhero teams right. and was was trying to focus more on the personal lives and things that were happening to them in between big superhero missions. Um, but in any case, the, the, the regular artist on the book drew it in a cartoon year style. So when they needed fill in art for it, uh, I think, you know, they didn't know who to go to among their usual pool of talent because it was just this different style. So when I happened to send stuff in that include more animated style, uh, work, um, that got my foot in the door and that led to eventually, uh, doing issues of the Justice League uh, tie-in book, uh, which I loved doing and would love to have done more of, but you know they had, the writing and the art in that book were kind of you know they would rotate through a, a pool of writers and artists. So you know I'd do a couple and then I wouldn't do another one for four to six months, and then I'd do a couple more. Um, uh, but I love doing those. And then uh, they announced that they were going to be doing a new Batman animated series, which was The Batman, um, which, which, you know, I love the show. Uh, I have a great deal of affection for the show, but I have described it to fan, to friends as uh, it's the Batman show that came after the one everybody loves. Right. <laughs> It, it, about I, Jeff, Jeff it, Matsuda, right? Uh, yeah, Jeff Matsuda was the the designer for it and one of the producers on it. Um, he, I mean, the, really, the truthful statement about the show is it was the show that got thrown on the grenade 
of the Batman show that had to follow the DCAU. Yeah, you'd have that big chain of shows with consistent casting and continuity, you know, running from Batman the Animated Series through, you know, Justice League and Batman Beyond. And then this was all new, all different Batman. And fans being fans were all like, if it's not Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill, I don't want to have anything to do with it. And now we know there's going to be a new Batman show every five years. Yeah. You know, when the one you like ends, well, another one's coming. Um, so, but, uh, but I knew that show was coming out, and I'm like, well, I know how this works. DC will do a tie-in comic for that show. And they hadn't announced it yet. But I'm like, oh, well, I, I'm sure it's going to happen. So I asked through the people I was working with on Justice League if they knew yet who the editor was going to be on that book. And uh, I got put in, in contact with that editor and uh, did a couple sample pages and ended up getting the gig to be the regular artist on that book. And so that was my first ongoing monthly title uh, at DC. Which you did like 50 issues of. Yeah, sh just slightly shy of 50 because they they gave me fill-in issues once in a while, which I didn't uh, request. But <laughs> they, they decided, like, well, he's a little tight on the deadline. He's not behind, but he's tight, so we're going to give him a fill-in issue. I don't know. I, I sometimes theorize that they liked to have um, somebody else uh, warmed up that could do the book if there was ever a problem. So you had to throw an issue out there once in a while to just make sure that there's somebody else who could step in. I don't know. I mean, we had some we had some great people do fill-ins. I think over the whole run there were like four or five, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, other than other than those few, yeah, I drew the whole run uh, from when it started until the end of the series at issue fifty. Nice. Which was. Uh, a lot of fun. I love Batman. He's my childhood favorite superhero. So getting to, you know, because I'd already gotten to draw Batman for DC in the context of Justice League, which was great. But drawing Batman in a ensemble story is not the same as you're drawing Gotham City, you're drawing the Batcave, you're drawing yeah. Commissioner Gordon and Alfred and all those things. Um, you know, granted, I still wasn't getting to put my own um stamp on it to the extent that uh, i was having to go with the designs and the versions of the characters that were done for the animated tv show it wasn't like mm -hmm. oh let me let me go crazy creatively and give you my versions of these characters <laughs> but obviously you're still bringing a lot of your own creativity to it in the storytelling and and all of that and uh and so it was yeah what a fun what a fun job that was when you when you do like that comic book adaptation, you know where they tie in a comic book series to an animated show. Do they give you like the the content to, you know the the model sheets and everything to to learn how to draw, or or do you have to kind of just figure it out? It varies. Um, when I was doing the Batman Strikes, they were pretty good about giving me um, model sheets and reference for backgrounds and and props and things. Um, I did a few stories for Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes, uh, the, the time comic for that show. And that I literally was like hitting, uh, Google image search to see what I could find online. <laughs> nice. Uh, cause they, I didn't have any. Was DC not upset for, for taking taking work with Marvel at the time? Because didn't no, I wasn't DC? under any kind of an exclusive or anything. They they oh. were they were not even coming close during that era to keeping me busy full time. I so yeah, there was no there was no. I mean, if if anything, you you'd hope that they'd be like, oh hey, Marvel's giving this guy work. We should maybe give him more work to keep him busy. <laughs> um, but uh, no, I never heard a word about it. Um, wasn't that kind of a situation, but um, no, the, the easiest I ever had for uh, uh, reference was when I was doing the Young Justice tie-in comic. Um, Greg Wiseman, who was one of the producers of that show, along with Brandon Vietti, um, was not only writing uh, the comic, but was essentially acting as the liaison between the show and DC Comics. Nice. So 
Uh, not only, you know, was it pretty easy for him to get his uh, stories signed off on by the show because he was the one that could sign off on them, but, uh, you know, when he would um, put a script together, uh, he would just make sure that I got sent all the relevant uh, model sheets and reference packets for the characters and locations that were included in the story. So, yeah, just easy peasy. Did you did you watch the Justice League cartoon before you got the job to do the tie-in? The Justice League cartoon, absolutely. Are they, uh, Young, Justice. Young, Justice? Young Justice. Young Justice. Yeah. The, the, so the timing on the Young Justice thing, the way that worked out is I tried to do the same stunt I had done on uh, the Batman Strikes because uh, I heard there was going to be this new show, Young Justice. Um, I had met Greg Wiseman before. Uh, and had even drawn a 10-page story he wrote for uh, an anthology. It was one of those, I think, Silver Age secret files things that DC mm. was doing for a while there where they were, were trying to bring back those big kind of 80-page anthology books. Um, it was in one of those. Uh, it was a, a Justice League Europe story. Um, so I, I had this connection with Greg, and it's like, oh, he's doing a superhero show. Uh, that would be fun to work on the comic for. I should see if I could go after that job. Um, uh, and by the time I tracked down who the editor was, um, they already had a creative team in place for it. The artwork was going to be done by an artist named Mike Norton, who does great stuff. Um, but there was no place for me on the book. So I was like, ah, oh, well, would have been fun. Um, and then time passes. And if you recall, they aired the two-part premiere a few months before the series as a regular Absolutely. thing came out. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And the two-part premiere came on. I'm like, oh, that was fantastic. Now I really wish I'd gotten to work on this book. Oh, well. Um, and a little more time elapses, and I get randomly contacted by the editor at DC. And I was told that Mike had taken an offer and was moving on to a different book. And would I still be interested in doing the the Young Justice title? And uh, I don't remember if I let them finish the sentence before <laughs> I asked. If I, you know, if I was being smart enough to play it cool, I would have let them finish the sentence. But I think I pounced on it pretty quickly. You're like, I guess, um, I guess I can, but I mean, like my page rate is yeah. like. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> but yeah, so so I you know I got my second chance at it, and the first couple stories I did um, uh, were uh, part of the the early issues that were written by Art and Franco. Right. Uh, they were writing stories, I think, if not based on story outlines, at least with a lot of guidance. I know from from Greg Wiseman and the show because they were trying to make sure that those stories fit well into continuity but by my my third issue greg had come on and was now writing the book directly himself and from that point forward i mean the the i mean those stories are completely considered part of the canon of the show you can even thread the time stamps oh, together right. and work yeah. how, how yeah, absolutely all the events of this in, show in comics insane. Thread together yeah, oh, I, I, I talked to Greg about... So Greg has this timeline of events for the show that um, used to go back to something like 20,000 BC. It was basically the birth of Vandal Savage. And then after season three got made, it now goes back to the beginning of the universe. <laughs> yeah. But he has this, total, this timeline of events of everything that has been established is happening in Young Justice that's you know cross referenced with who all the characters are and everything. It's like it's it's ridiculous. But uh uh yeah, I mean what a great show. I mean I, I it, it's it, so I, I was a fan of it before I got to work on it, which which then let me feel like I wasn't being completely unobjective mm -hmm. when I would wax poetic about how much I love the show uh and how much you know I love uh being connected to it. Um, cause I really was a fan before I had any claim on having any creative part of it at all. Um, but, uh, yeah, certainly it was a thrill to, to then get to, um, uh, 
be, be a part of it with with uh, that comic series. So so when they never came out with, you know, when at the time they never came out with uh, Young Justice season three and we never thought that it was going to happen. And you had the story like you had the, the missing link. <laughs> Like it was, it was you and Greg and and uh, and uh, Hops, right? Or was it just Weissman at the time? Um, well, from my my understanding is when the Kevin Hops uh, name appeared in the credits, uh, it was because some of the stories that Greg was basing his comic scripts gotcha. on were things that had been developed for the show and then just didn't make their way into an episode. The way the show is written, um, you know, they, they developed this, like I said, this very elaborate timeline, you know, when, oh. when they, when they do these time skips, it's not like Greg and Brandon don't know what went on in between seasons. <laughs> they just have decided that they're going to prioritize telling these stories over these stories, given the finite number of episodes that they, have been given to do. So the great thing about the comic book means that more st more of those stories get told. Mm -hmm. um, and so Greg would sometimes, this is my understanding, uh, that he would take stories that Kevin Hopps had helped develop. And uh, I don't think Kevin was involved in adapting that into a comic story, but Greg gave him uh, co-writing credit because he'd helped come up with the original story material um and so yeah the, i mean the last you know that last run of stories uh you know we did under the invasion banner yeah um those actually take place just before season two um starts right um so they they show things like blue beetle getting recruited to join the team and, and things mm -hmm. like that um you know we wanted at the time to like have the comic keep running um and and be able to keep telling stories even if the show wasn't continuing but at the time um for whatever reason dc wasn't interested in that and it's their characters and they can do what they want with them so you know that's all fine and good um it was yeah, a, a disappointment to us at the time hmm? young justice should have had 50 issues like absolutely i mean well it would have been nice yeah. uh you know, I, you know like i said uh, the i i'm all in favor of there being more of the comics, uh, not because of whether or not it provides work for me, but because if you're a fan of the show and those storylines, uh, you know, w w however many seasons there ended up being, I mean, you know, it seemed like a miracle when we got season three and now, you know, we have season four in production. Um, but, you know, however long the series does or doesn't go, um, you're never going to have enough episodes getting produced to tell all the stories that they know exist to tell with these characters. And I think one of the things that makes Young Justice so unique and special is that, uh, you know, yes, these characters almost all um, appear in other forms in other comics and TV shows and things, but the Young Justice versions of them and the relationships that they've had and especially because the young justice's sense of continuity is so um honest with its timeline and and there is such a sense of things never were set to a status quo they always are evolving forward um uh, you know getting to see more of these characters in some other form isn't the same as getting to see more of the young justice stories with them so during the convention time period, when you had people that would come up there, what would be like the main, like if you, if you would say that I got this item to sign more than any other item, what would it have been? Oh, people wanting me to sign stuff at conventions? Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I guess just copies of the, of the book, uh, just books the, the prints that I had. Um, the, I mean, the biggest thing when people would come by my table at conventions, honestly, was... You know, I'd, I'd be sitting at my table in Artist Alley, and I'd have a big banner behind me that had a number of my credits listed on it, but the artwork was a big Young Justice yeah. piece of art. And people would be walking by in Artist Alley, and it, they'd see the Young Justice art, and they would stop in their tracks because there really wasn't a lot of Young Justice stuff out there right. at conventions. Um, 
you know, the, the merchandise line, while it existed, was very limited. Um, you know, uh, DC was not doing a huge amount to promote the book. I mean, we were happy they were <laughs> letting us do the book. That was great. Um, but they're just, you know, you didn't see a lot of Young Justice stuff at conventions. Um, and and they would stop and they'd be like, what's this? You know, who are you? What, what do you do? And as I would explain that I drew the comic book tie-in, these Young Justice fans who were rabid fans of the show and absolutely the kind of comic readers that were going to their local shop to pick up new books every Wednesday had no idea there was a tie-in comic because the comic was branded as an all-ages title. So whether it was the solicitations in the Diamond catalog or at most local retail shops, it wasn't with the other superhero books. It was with Looney Tunes and Scooby-Doo. Yeah, it was. So there were so many fans that just had no idea it was out there. And then as I would explain to them, like, oh, no, and it's in continuity with the show, and Greg Wiseman writes the book. They were like, what? <laughs> so, uh, you know, that was kind of my mission during that era at cons was just to help kind of introduce people to the comic book existing. Mm -hmm. um, so <laughs> that was that was my experience at cons during that time. Man, dude, it's still awesome. It's still that is awesome. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, and uh, you know, I became this weirdly this sort of. Um, so I mean, Greg only does a certain number of conventions a year, mm -hmm. and Brandon does fewer than that. Uh, Brandon's not big on, on conventions generally, I don't think. Um, so basically, you had me as the artist on the comic book, probably the one doing the most convention appearances of anybody associated with the property because you know the the two guys that were producing the show weren't doing that many appearances and then you know as you get into like the voice actors and and different people involved with the show um you know if they're doing conventions it wasn't necessarily as exclusively a young justice thing um so Basically, I ended up being one of the higher profile Young Justice presences on the convention circuit, which is so sometimes could become awkward because then people would be asking about the status of, you know, whether the third season's going to happen or, or, you know, whatever it was. And I'd be like, you know, boy, am I not an official source of information on <laughs> any of this? <laughs> I'm just drawing the comic book here, <laughs> but you know, I, I, you know, still was happy to try to, you know, promote it and cheerlead for it. And then, you know, especially as we got into the, the whole fight to make season three happen. But, uh, you know, again, it was just, it was from this very unofficial point of, of, you know, having drawn the tie in comic. Well, you know, like from from all the forums and the petitions and everything that was that was done out there to kind of bring Justice League back for our, our I keep saying Justice League, Young Justice. You say Young Justice. Sorry. You're not alone. I don't yeah, know. There's, yeah, there's yeah. something <laughs> programmed into the fan psyche. So, I would have people, I've, I've I would have people stand in front of my table, look at a book, and say, "So what's this Young Justice League book?" And yeah, like, where I mean, do you see the word League on that cover? Yeah, it, I've been stuck in it, Justice League because of the Snyder Cut comes out next week, yeah. and I've been watching tons of stuff on it. If you're talking DC Comics and say the word justice, I think the word league yeah, just automatically follows. It leaps out there, yeah. yeah. But uh, so so Young Justice, um, you know, when knowing that uh, – God, man, I feel like I've lost my train of thought completely. Uh -oh. um, so um, – well, if you don't, I have a question. If you don't mind, yeah, go for a while. So, you know, you 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 know, you were working on the comics. You know, then pushing for the the third season. I mean, uh, for working in both mediums. I mean, is it a similar uh, environment? I mean, what's the difference working on comic books, uh, you know, sequential art and stuff, and then working in the animation arena? Well, so I I moved out to L.A. Um, at the very end of 2019 uh, to join the crew on season four of Young Justice. And uh, unfortunately, I was only out here for about two and a half months before the pandemic hit. And now I've been working from home 
which has really made it feel a lot more like my my comic drawing experience. Because you know, I would have said that the biggest difference was that you know the comics work. You know, even when you're collaborating with people creatively, you're mm -hmm. doing the work in isolation. I would sit at in at home um on my on you know in my art studio which is like one of the bedrooms of my apartment uh you know doing my artwork and you know not see anybody that i'm i'm working with um and when i first started working for warner brothers animation i was going into the studio and i had uh, a cubicle that was right next to uh greg and brandon's offices and i was meeting other people that worked on the show and that was all great and now i'm in my uh, apartment again <laughs> but um you know the the biggest thing is um you know the thing i miss about the comic stuff as opposed to working on the animation side is when you are um when you're drawing a comic even you know assuming you're not writing it yourself if, you, if you're just doing the artwork you're still collaborating with people but there are a lot fewer creative voices you know if you, you are you are a soloist and not a voice in the choir. Um, and and I certainly feel like when I'm doing animation stuff, um, I'm contributing creatively, but it's going to be really hard to be able to point out to somebody when the show comes out where my contributions were. Gotcha. Um, it's so it's it's very it is very different, but it's it's rewarding in its own ways. Absolutely. When you posted the banner online, I don't know if you saw my comment, but I said Ben Affleck was the bomb in that. <laughs> oh, about, about phantoms, yeah. Yes. yes. I didn't know um, if anybody was going to get that. Like, Well, he was the bomb in phantoms. Come on. Yeah, he was the bomb know that. in phantoms. Um, and, and when that joke was made, he hadn't played a DC superhero yet. So yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Now he's played a DC superhero, Marvel superhero, and an actor playing a DC superhero. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I, I remember what my question was. So at the, at the sure. time, at the time that they had decided they're not going to do season three, um, you know, there were tons of petitions, uh, tons of people trying to make this happen. Okay. And on on the boards, like I don't know if you know this, but you are definitely credited as one of the people that that made this happen. Well, I'm I'm flattered that people think that. Again, I think that like that largely comes from my visibility on the convention circuit and and my my how active I was, especially on this topic on on social media. Um, I mean, really, what I was doing was I was just trying to f to follow Greg's lead and amplify what he was saying, because the the situation we had was that you know, fans being fans, uh, they were wanting to do petitions, and the problem with petitions is that it's not like Warner Brothers Animation didn't know the show was popular. Mm -hmm. Um, the problem was. Uh, they didn't have any way to pay for it. They didn't have anywhere to show it. Um, so, you know, a petition, while someone might go, wow, they got a lot of signatures on that petition. Yeah, there's no money. It doesn't change <laughs> any of the math. Right. Um, what changed was that Netflix started, uh, I mean, they'd, been, they'd had season one for a while. They added season two, and they started getting killer numbers which made them interested in possibly doing a season three and you know greg was aware of this and so he was trying to draw attention to you know the best thing you could do if you want more young justice is watch the show like crazy on netflix don't watch your dvds that you already own because it's you know thank you so much and hooray for you having bought them but whether you watch it or not now doesn't affect anything. Once you've spent your money, that's done. But if you watch it on Netflix, that's going to show up on a computer tally of who's watching the show. And he was trying to spread the word using a hashtag. And so I was trying to like communicate here. This is the official hashtag. And again, fans being fans, 
all wanted to create their own little version of the hashtag. So they had their own little piece of the campaign. It's like, yeah, but that's like counterproductive. That's diffusing the message. We're wanting to focus the message. We want one hashtag. So it was really just me trying to follow Greg's lead on that whole movement. And then, uh, you know, in an alternate reality, we might have gotten a season three on Netflix instead you know, as as it was becoming, as the math was proving out that creating a new season as original content for streaming was a good idea, DC was deciding to launch their own streaming service. And somebody mm -hmm. said, well, why are we giving the show to them? Why don't we do that? Yeah, why don't we do it and have some original content? So that's what happened. And then they decided that, you know, well, instead of, having the DC universe as its lonely little thing. Why don't we fold all that content into HBO Max? So now season four will be on HBO Max. But it's all, you know, very much flows from that moment of mm -hmm. um, the the rise of original content for streaming changed the equation. Because, um, the you know, the first two seasons were a partnership between Warner Bros. Animation and Cartoon Network and it was partially paid for by a big uh, merchandising license with Mattel. And when that merchandise didn't do well for whatever reason, uh, and Mattel didn't want to re-up on their deal, that's pretty much what killed the show. But now with the whole streaming thing, you don't need a merchandise line to help pay for it. it, it you know, they're, they're hungry enough for content that the streaming platform is willing to pay for it. Which gives, uh, you know, Warner Brothers Animation, who always loved the show and had always been interested in bringing it back if they could find a way to do it, a way to pay for it, and a place to show it. So, how quickly did in in the in the breakdown or from the time that they said, "Hey, look, we're green light in season three. Like, when did you get the when did you get the uh, the the information when did you get told that they were going to be doing season three like surely you got it before everybody else did um i yeah. and how excited were you I, well i was very excited i don't remember how, how much disappointed lead, were you yeah I, I don't know how much of a lead uh on the general public i had uh you know because you know greg as, as much as like Greg and I have been close on the whole Young Justice thing, with having done the comic together, he still very much likes to to play things on a very need to know yeah. sort of basis. Yeah, I could but, never do this because I would have been I'd have been like what? <laughs> like I'd have been calling everybody and lost my job. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, the. the uh, uh, I mean, the only reason I found out when I did that season four was happening is I was literally with Greg at a convention when he got the phone call. Nice. And we were, we were, we were at dinner, and he found out. And I was like, oh, cool. Um, but uh, uh, the, uh, the, but the news on season three, I mean, you know, of course it was thrilling that it was finally happening. <laughs> Part of the problem, and you know, fans keep thinking that the show takes forever and ever and ever to produce. Um, the reality is, all animation takes a long time oh, absolutely. to produce. But normally, you hear about a new show coming out when it's about to come out. Yeah. And in the case of these newest seasons of Young Justice, uh, I think because there was this ardent fan base clamoring for the show. Um, they decided to like make it public like right away when they were green lighting it. And that's when work was starting right. on the show. You know, they still had to go and like write a season of episodes, let alone produce all the animation and, and music and everything. So uh, yeah, it just, it takes a while. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I mean, from the time that they, I, I forget how long it was from when they announced the green light for season three to when it came out. And then the release of it was, you know, all much like, much like cart with Cartoon Network, um, when there would be delays in something coming out, it, it usually had nothing to do with what was happening as far as the production being behind. It was just the, the choices that the, um, 
you know, either Cartoon Network or the streaming platform made in terms of the timing that was optimal for them in context with their other shows of wanting to make sure that they always had, un, you know, original stuff dropping. Um, you know, they would time like, oh, then we want new episodes of Young Justice to come out here. Like, so they sit on stuff that is ready to go. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, it's, that makes sense. That's just how the business works. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now, beyond everything that you've done thus far, I know there's certain things that you're working on that you can't talk about, but is there anything, any other projects you're working on, any independent projects, things that you're trying to do, anything you can talk about that's coming down the road for you? <laughs> uh, uh, gosh, is there it's anything? Like, not really. I've, got, like, <laughs> I've got like two or three things that I'm sitting on that like I could probably talk about in a month gotcha. or two. We'll have you back on. right now... <laughs> Well, have no. you uh, <laughs> set the reminder file exactly one month? One month. Oh, don't don't act like that. Your network will likely will likely know more about exactly one month. Like, okay, fine. Now I'm locked in. All right, yeah, it's lock it in. I'll have to make one something month. up if I don't have anything real I can report. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's man. cool, man. So. Um, you know, looking behind you, you got some pretty awesome things. So I have a couple questions. Oh yes, like yes. number one, have you put on the Doctor Fate helmet? Um, I have tried, and sadly, it does not oh. fit my noggin. Oh, dude, I know where you're coming from. Now, uh, I have that Green Lantern lan. I have the Green Lantern lantern. I have it on my head. Either. Is it a lantern or a lantern? It's a lantern. Okay, just checking. Yeah. And I have mine. It's still it's over here in the box from where I got moved in. But how many times have you put the ring on and done the oath? Hold on. Oh, my battery's dead. I think my battery's. Oh dead. no, no. Oh, charge it. Just charge it. Big trouble back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> how many? I have. I can honestly say I had to put the ring on and say the oath once when I first yeah. got it. You have to. I don't, I don't know that I've repeated it since. Oh, it's, well, not, a, it's not a regular ritual. I definitely but. have done it probably more than once, <laughs> and less than twenty, <laughs> but definitely, definitely more than ten. And then I've got you know this this guy back here. Yeah, and, I was about to say it. Yeah, like when you that, when you push that, what what happens? Like um. Did it, something well, open up on this I, of the camera? We my, can't see. My old apartment, I had it. That was how I turned on my my lights in the living room. Oh, nice. What? Here, unfortunately, I haven't figured out a good place to set it that's close enough to an outlet to be able to 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 hook it into something. Mm -hmm. Um. So it just sits there and it's decorative. Nice. I mean, I mean, I could put my flash suit on if you guys want to uh -huh. see that. I mean, oh, show off. <laughs> what? I'm not showing up. What? <laughs> hey guys. Um. So, uh, you know, I asked a couple questions for the show about some artists for, uh, you know, other than yourself in the animated space, who would you say is probably one of the top <laughs> animation artists for for DC and Batman, and why is it Bruce Tim? Well, I was going to say, let me phrase this. <laughs> let me phrase this in the context of who I'd like to hire me. Uh, so, um, there's there's so many great uh, uh, people there, and uh, one of the things that's frustrating about uh, getting sent to work from home because of the pandemic is it it limits um, some of the opportunities that were presenting themselves. To actually, get to meet some more of these folks in person yeah. um, there's a there's an assumption that that gets made that uh that we all get to know each other and i've, I've been at I, made that. I made that assumption well I, I mean i've been at conventions where i'll be in a, a like a, a green room area for guests and there will be somebody back there that i haven't met and i don't go up and introduce myself to them because if i don't already know them i feel like well, they're they're backstage. They're in the green room. This is their downtime. They don't need another fan coming up to them and gushing over them just because I also happen to have a guest badge. So I leave them alone. So you know, there's tons of people that like I've been at conventions with. I've been in the same room with. I've still never talked to them. 
Um, That's probably how it should be, Niall. <laughs> somebody, um, somebody may have talked to somebody back, like in the green room. Somebody, uh, yeah. not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna name any names. For me, <laughs> I can't do it. My arms. Yeah. <laughs> um. But I, you know, but, but yeah, I mean, you mentioned Bruce Tim, and obviously, you know, somebody who, who, my whole love of what DC has done in the animated area comes from what he and Ellen Burnett and Paul Dini uh, and, and others uh, built. Um, you know, I, I was lucky enough to get to meet Dwayne McDuffie before he passed away. And oh, awesome. He, aside from uh, loving his his talent as a as a writer, uh, he was just such a sweetheart of a man, and and I it breaks my heart that that he's not uh, around for me to get to know better. But also, you know, I wanted, wanted more work out of him. I wanted more stories. Yeah, well, uh, especially with them bringing back Milestone now. Yeah. Uh, you know, in the comic stuff, and and man, like he left this. I don't know if you saw this story that he did. In Justice League, but it had it had Vixen, and it was the last the last like story that never got finished, and nobody knew where he was going with it. But uh, you know, Vixen had the power to pull anything, like you know, get the power from any person, right? Right. And uh, so she called everybody in, and she goes, "Look, uh, something happened today, and I just need to show you guys. Like, I don't know what's going on or how this happened." And then she just raises her hand. And she uses the Green Lantern power. She uses the willpower. Yeah, this was a, a story. This was the the story from Dwayne McDuffie, and it just never, obviously, never got fit oh. finished. And because you know they were trying to say that you know the willpower came from came from him, and mm -hmm. uh, you know they had already had the you know the big fight where you know. Uh, Deathstroke was like, I really, I always wanted to try this when he was beating up Kyle Rayner, and he's like, let's see whose will is more powerful during the Identity Crisis, you know, like when he put his hand on there and mm -hmm. and and was able to to use the willpower of the ring without actually wearing it, uh, just by having it having his hand on. It. I don't know, like, uh, sorry, go ahead, Dwayne McDuffie, he's gr the greatest. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, James Tucker, I've like had a couple of quick exchanges with online and I've been in the same room with, with the man, but I haven't had a chance to have a face to face with him. But, uh, you know, aside from all the other things he's done at Warner brothers animation, uh, I'm the biggest fan of his brave and the bold show. Um, I, 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 I was very dubious of that one when they were first announcing it and then it came on and I just fell it in looked, love with it. It, was, it looked it so awesome. bad, man, but I loved it. Oh my god, it was so incredible. I like the look of it. it the yeah. thing the thing I love about it is as much as you know you think of it uh, about it it's being camping. funny, um, the fact that it it wasn't to show that like everything was about going for the joke. They told fun Batman adventure stories and weren't afraid of it being silly, mm -hmm. which allowed them to explore all of this silver age stuff which had kind of been campy ignored yeah, campy. for decades yeah. because if you're going to go all grim dark with everything you can't do detective chimp yeah right you know and there are some great characters out there and some really fun things that if you if you just kind of embrace the fact that you know this genre is inherently a little goofy it's about people putting on tights and fighting crime yeah, I can't. Uh, this is not yeah. a realistic genre. Um, then there's there's a lot of fun to be had. They had great yeah. cameos too, other yeah, characters right. that came in, and that like reminds me. You know, me and Blevins were talking a couple days ago. We were just talking. I was like, man, do you ever like just like forget like like underappreciated how you know Justice League Unlimited was? I mean, you had like each episode was dedicated to another, uh, even sometimes like B list. DC superhero. Um, and I always I loved that. I loved how they just focused on, you know, Booster Gold was focused on one. Amazo was amazing. Amazo yeah. was so crazy. The mm -hmm. gold, the gold Amazo. Sorry. Yeah, no, they, they were. I feel like Justice League is the show that cracked the code. Mm -hmm. That if you can do you can do Literally. a series about um the whole of a universe of superhero characters. 
and have characters walk in and out of stories and you don't need to do the spotlight episode that tells their origin story and gives you all yeah. the background. It's like, you know, you can still do those. And if you're going to focus on a character, that's fine. But you can have vigilante show up. Yeah. Who and you don't awesome. need to, you don't need to awesome. do the vigilante origin story. It's just like, what do we need to know about this character in the context of what they're going to do in the story that we're telling right now? Yeah. And we'll make sure that we include that in the exposition. And otherwise... If you want to know more, go look him up. Google exists. Yeah. Well, it was like, yeah, it was um, like, this is all what's happening in the world. In this episode, you're going to see, you know, Green Arrow, Canary, and Black Cat, you know, doing their episode. In the next episode, you know, you've got Booster Gold and doing his whole thing with, um, uh, not Plastic Man. Who is the other stretch? Uh, Blue, Blue Elongated Man. Man. Elongated, yeah. Oh, Elongated, Elongated Man. Man. And I mean, I just loved that. But you did, though, because it did make you Google. You know, yeah. like what is it? Uh, is it the red tornado or? Uh, yeah, yeah, red, red tornado. I, I honestly, I like never really heard of him before till I saw that episode, and of course, I googled him, and you know, now, uh, you know, just because I thought he was so interesting, I you know hunted down the first appearance of him. But so one of, one of my credits that I posted about this on my website back in the day, but I still most people don't know I I did is there was a time so. The, the toy line for Justice League and specifically mm -hmm. Justice League Unlimited was like the toy line that would not die. Those toys just kept selling and selling and selling. And they would keep doing like the three packs and stuff where like one of the figures was like, you know, some variant of Batman or whatever. But they, they'd gotten to the point where they had literally gone through pretty much every hero and villain that ever appeared on the show. Right. <laughs> and the toys were still selling. So I got this great gig. It was this was so fun. Working for DC's licensing department, they had me do character turns in that that Bruce Tim animation style of characters that hadn't ever appeared on the show, but drawn in that style. So they could then give those drawings to Mattel, oh, who cool. then came out with That's more awesome. toys based on characters that hadn't even been in the show. So I did the Doom Patrol. I did the Marvel Family, because you got Captain Marvel, yeah. but you did Shazam and Black Adam and... Uh, was it Mary Marvel? Yeah. Um, and uh, Hal Jordan in his flight suit with Abin Sur. Um, uh, and then from the Super Friends, Black Vulcan... Uh, um, uh, Samurai and Chief Apache Chief. Yeah, was, uh, for some reason my brain was wanting to go to El Diablo, but like, no, that's not who it was. It was Apache Chief. Um, so you know, all these, all these characters. Oh, Plastic Man, mm -hmm. got to do Plastic Man. Um, God, did you do the Wonder Twins? <laughs> didn't do the Wonder Twins. I, I mean, I was limited to like which ones they asked me to yeah. do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I think they probably, didn't, and Wendy, you had to I do think probably didn't do the Wonder Twins because they'd already done, uh, I forget what they were called, but there was that group of characters that were sort of the analogous to the Wonder Twins and some of the other Super Friends characters. Yeah. But mm -hmm. they still decided, even though I think it doubled up on some of that a little bit, they had me do the three Super Friends characters that I did. But like, that, was, that was just a ton of fun. And he, he, when those toys came out, they even had the um, the line art that I did as part of the packaging on the back of the oh cool box. So it wasn't credited as being mine, but like the art was there. It's like oh that's yeah. cool. Dude, that's, so that's, that's pretty fun. awesome. That is awesome, man. You've really, you really had your hand, you've had your hand in quite a few different things. Yeah, I mean it's it's like I said, I you know I did not ever set out to specialize in doing mm -hmm. the animation tie-in stuff, but I've certainly got to work on a lot of really fun properties doing that and as much as there are some things about it that were frustrating at times mm -hmm. uh, i also got to like bypass a lot of the things i've heard about friends that have done a lot more work in more of the mainstream comics where you're you know you make plans and then because something is happening with a, some crossover event like all your plans get rearranged at the last minute and you're doing all these crazy deadline scrambles because of that. And, you know, I was like, mm -hmm. I'm 
I'm just doing doing stuff based on the cartoons. DC <laughs> threw all that out of the window right now, man. Like they don't care about what's happening in other books. Like Superman will be saving Metropolis here, and he'll be in this other place, and in this third book, he'll be over here all on the same day. You know, like, he's, a busy, he's a busy man. <laughs> he's a busy man. Yeah. And, and Chris, tell us a bit about your website because I know if anyone's interested in learning more about you, they can head on over to your website. But yeah, also, I have. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say you also have, you know, access to your gallery, uh, your comics bibliography, your your press release stuff, uh, yeah, my, links my, to your my, stores. My yeah, I, I'm I'm actually in the process of trying to uh, to upgrade the website a little bit. My my gallery is rather old and out of date, and needs to be revised, but. Uh, as, as uh, wh wh when I am doing conventions, which I haven't been for a year, um, but when I am doing them, uh, my website is where I will, you know, will post my upcoming appearances and, you know, where I'm going to be and and you know, like what I'm charging for commissions and things like that. Um, and and while I do most of my day to day posting on things like Facebook and Twitter, mm -hmm. uh, if you go to my website. That has links to all my social media, so you can basically find me on whatever other platform I'm on that you want to find me. And uh, there's a picture of me in a Superman costume when I was nice. 10. Um, so uh, that, that all is there, as well as um, uh, a link to my Etsy store where I have uh, prints that I have done and things like that. It's under a link uh, that simply says, buy stuff. Nice. All right, fantastic, man. Solid. Well, it's not and it's up. Awesome, dude. Oh, it's there we go. <laughs> there it goes. Yeah. Let it Load down it out. So that, that gives you a few preview images, but yeah, you can all you can just go directly to the Etsy store. And yeah, uh, I like that Batman uh, Goliath. I was just looking at that. I'm like, that's so awesome. Batman Goliath was pretty cool. It's it's Nightwing and Goliath Our specifically, Nightwing. and the the it, the origin of that actually is. Um, uh, a little over 20 years ago, when I was living in Minnesota, uh, I helped start a science fiction convention there called Convergence. And one of the things that I, I started doing from the beginning of that convention that I still do today is, you know, we would have um, eight to ten uh, guests per year. Mm -hmm. And I will do unique artwork for the badges for those guests that in some way reflects something they're known for or something they've worked on or their own personal fandom or whatever it is. And uh, we've had Greg there a few times as a guest. And one year uh, he, he came there when it was the uh, 20th anniversary of another little show he worked on, uh, Disney's Gargoyles. Mm -hmm. And we had uh, a few people there that year as guests who were associated with Gargoyles. So for all of their badges, I drew a character from Gargoyles mashed up with some other credit they're also known for. Uh, so man, no, we I had did. Marina Sirtis there, and I did Demona dressed in uh, Counselor at the end of Troy's uniform from Star Trek. Nice. Yeah. Well, hey, Chris, I have to say, man, it's been a pleasure having you on the show Absolutely. and chatting with you. Um, love to have you on anytime you want. We actually do uh, another show. Uh, where we bring a guest on to join us. It's kind of like our end of the week wrap up show. If you're ever interested in hanging out with us, there's a little agenda. We talk about certain topics. It's kind of like a week in pop type deal. Uh, we just kind of have fun making fun of each other for liking something or not liking sure. something or just, it's just a good time just geeking out. Um, so you're always more than welcome to come on. You, you have such a wonderful personality. I think you'd be perfect for it. 100%. 100%. <laughs> I, yeah, I thank you so much. It's been great chatting with you guys and I'd love to come back. Oh, fantastic. All right, everyone. If you enjoyed seeing this episode tonight and you want to see a lot more, make sure to click that subscribe button and smash that bell so you get notifications when we go smash live it. and we upload awesome new content like this interview with Christopher Jones. And if you guys are interested in learning more about Chris, please uh, check out all the links. They're in the description for this episode. And Mr. Blevins, you stream king. I'm just the next to one, hit, bro. I just want people to hit that button like it owes them money. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right everyone we'll see you on the next i'll teach you to date my sister and cut tammy give tammy. me a selfie hey everyone thank you for joining us on pop xp if you haven't already make sure to click that subscribe button and also click the bell for notifications when we go live and we upload some awesome new content also don't forget to head on over to twitter and follow us at the pop xp 
and over on Instagram at the Pop XP. Thanks again, everyone, and we'll see you soon. Uh, uh, so great God, Nightwing with Goliath. Was there Amanda Connor there? No, sadly. Oh, you know she she, she did the R work or so for the comic. Like if you didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. I don't. Just, we'll cut well, that out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I that stupid oh, question I asked out. We'll just cut it out. Yeah, I'll we'll cut that out. Like, I don't know if you know this or not, but Amanda Connor cut is a gargoyle comic book. I don't know if you know or not.